folding laundry has got to be one of the most hated cleaning tasks that you guys deal with. Among the other most hated would be cleaning the bathroom and doing dishes and just laundry in general. And I get it, there's so much to do and so many techniques that you have to know. Now, we actually did a folding series. The last video we put out was in 2017, and my daughter was born in 2018, which is great for you if you have kids, because in this video, we are gonna be talking about not only how to fold and deal with little baby clothes, we're gonna talk about polo shirts, chunky sweaters, and comforters. And the way we got that was we went through the comments of the previous videos and we saw the things that were driving you the most nuts. So in this video, we're gonna deal with this. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, remember to turn on that notification bell so you always know when a new video is out and give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to learn how to fold all the things. First up, the chunky sweater. Now, if you have a thinner sweater, they're obviously very easy to fold, but as you get into the chunkier knits, you might feel concerned because, you know, as you fold them, they can be bunchy or slippery and they won't stay in shape. Well, I'm here to tell you, look at this one. It can, it will, you just have to know the technique. Now, the other thing to know about sweaters is, you know, not all necklines are created equal. Sometimes you might have a turtleneck, you might have a hood. The trick here, and I will actually show you on this beautifully folded turtleneck sweater, if you just see what I did in reverse, the first thing you do is you conceal the weird neck. So you're gonna fold it down. You always, when you're folding, and we're gonna talk about this in just about everything that we fold, you always wanna create a square or a rectangle because that is the easiest thing to fold. So now that I've got my neck folded down, if I had a hood, it would be the same thing. I have more of a square, it's easier to fold. Next, I'm gonna do the regular thing that you normally do, fold in half of the body, tuck the sleeve back over, just like this. And when you do your fold, you want everything to be uniform and even from top to bottom. So you don't wanna have like a tapered triangle, which I realize I have a little bit of right now. You want it to be as uniform as possible in terms of its shape. You wanna have a clean rectangle. And then with sweaters, I always like to fold, especially with chunky ones, and I'll demo with this chunky one as well, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But I like, when I, whenever I do a fold, I always like to fold in thirds. The trick with the sweater is to fold from the bottom up, and you wanna get the sleeves and the bottom of the sweater in your first third, but you can see here that I kind of cheated a little. It's not an even third, it's just a little one, just to kind of tuck all of this bottom stuff in that we know gets messy and then you're gonna do a dividing fold in half, just like that. And as sure as the sky is blue, there you go, a beautifully folded sweater. Let me show you with this chunky one, so you know that I'm not just bibbing and using my easiest sweater to fold. Okay, so this one's got a bit of a tapered in shape here. The knit is very thick, so you can see it's gonna be a bit of a job. The other thing to keep in mind is if you have this sort of tapered look or this sort of A-line situation going that you might have with a skirt, which would be the reverse of this. Again, you always wanna fold everything so that you're creating a square. So you'll see what I mean here. I'm folding a little bit more in on the top so that I have that straight line out here on the end. And trust me, once you try this for yourself, it'll make perfect sense. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get all of the bottom bits in at this small little tuck right here. Then I'm gonna divide in half. And by the way, whenever I store sweaters, chunky knits like this in a drawer, I always file them, which is how I like to put most things in a drawer, instead of putting them one on top of the other. So the first tip that I learned from someone who is pretty much a pro golfer and holding this camera um, is that all the buttons should be done up. So that is super helpful and that makes sense because it keeps the collar stiff. The other thing I will suggest is that you fold the collar as it is intended to look on the wearer. Next thing I'm gonna do is just flip it over onto its backside. So goal number one, I'm going to get this in a rectangular form. So I'm gonna fold this part in and you'll see I'm using the neckline as a guide. So right where the collar would hit your neck is where you wanna fold this into. And then I'm just folding the sleeve back on itself and quickly smoothing, I'm gonna repeat on the other side, making sure all of my lines are nice and neat as I go. And of course I'm doing this super slow so that you can see and I can explain, but when I'm actually doing it, it is much faster. 
And rather than doing the tri-fold that you would do with a normal shirt, I find this one folds up a lot nicer when you do smaller folds. So on this shirt, I might actually get three folds out of the deal. And you'll want to stop right at the base of the collar so that when you flip it over, it sits nicely and you can see this will stack up beautifully. Duvets and comforters are one of those items that uh, I actually hate storing. So uh, I would even suggest rethinking your bedroom decor strategy so that you can avoid having to store them because they are bulky and they don't fold up nicely. What Chad and I did, uh, we actually have a lighter weight duvet that you can use all year. I always get duvet and comforter mixed up, but it's a duvet uh, that you can use all year. And we got the lighter one so that in the summer, it kind of kept us the temperature that we need. And in the winter, if we need extra blankets, we can throw them on. Or in the summer, we can just fold it down to the end of the bed. That way we really never have to think about storing because it, oh, they're so annoying to store. But if you do have to store them, I have a couple of solutions for you. As you can clearly see, I mean, I gave it my best shot, but it is not a perfect square and it is going to look lopsided and yucky in a linen closet. So the two options I have for you are this. The first one, um, if your duvet does not have feathers, in which case we're going to have to use option two, but in option one, you can use a Ziploc space bag or a space saving bag. These are great. You open them up. They're large format. You can stuff whatever you need to stuff in there up to the fill line and then you can seal it up and either sit on it with your body weight, which will press out all of the extra air through a little valve. Then you'll just seal that valve by clipping it or snapping it closed. Or you can use a vacuum cleaner to actually extract all of the air from the bag. The bag flattens down to the size of roughly a pancake, and then you can shove it wherever you need to shove it, whether it's a linen closet or somewhere in the basement, and the great thing about that is it keeps it airtight and it's waterproof and it keeps all the things out that you don't want getting out and everything in that you need in. Now, the reason you don't want to use this option with a downfilled comforter or duvet is because this process can, can ruin the feathers and that's what you're paying for and that's what's keeping you warm. In that case, you would actually just want to use the bag that your comforter came in. Now, ours, because we don't store ours, actually is used for holiday decor storage, but I brought it up out of the goodness of my heart to show you. Now, the reason I like these, uh, not only are they plastic on one side so you can see what's in there and they're nice and durable, but they have this breathable material on the back side, which is really important, uh, especially for a natural fiber like down. So something like this would truly be a perfect option. So when you, you know, I, I love to tell you guys to throw everything out if you don't need it, but I actually think something like this would be worth keeping if you're planning on storing your duvet or comforter. And now perhaps the cutest part of the video, folding kids clothes. And I do have to say, I have a pretty cute collection of them. And I'm gonna show you not only how I kind of organize the drawers, cause I know I get a lot of questions about that too, but how some challenging items get folded. Now I'm also gonna tell you, I have a burgeoning bin of laundry that I have to do, which is why her drawers are a little less full right now, but we still have what we need. First thing I wanna show you is uh, this drawer divider. I think these are great for kids' rooms because they provide you with the flexibility as your kids grow to change up the configuration of what the drawers look like. Uh, you know, folding shirts, t-shirts, little sweaters, all you're using the same techniques that you would use for adult clothing, so I don't really wanna cover that, but I do wanna get into onesies because this is something I get asked about quite a bit. So here's probably one of my, I mean, look, guys, leopard baby, leopard mother, of course. Um, one of my all-time favorite onesies, okay? And I'm sad she's gonna grow out of it soon. But I wanna show you how uh, I fold this. And I came up with this technique on my own, and this works as your child grows. When Riley was really small, um, the same technique worked. And now that she's bigger, I just have to do an extra fold. So here's what I do. Again, I'm going on that principle of the square, so I flip up the diaper portion into the middle. The next thing I do is I fold the sleeves right in on each other, just like this, and then I have the coveted square. Next, I do a tri-fold like this, and I flatten it out, then I fold it over. I fold it into a rectangle like that, and I stuff it into the drawer. That's how it's done. There's your onesie. 
So now that you have all of this extra folding confidence, go out, show off, fold like a master. And just as a reminder, all of the other folding videos that we've made, I'm gonna throw in the description box down below. I will also have a link to those drawer dividers for you to check out as well. And that brings me to this week's common question, which is, what is your biggest folding challenge? What is the thing that you are really struggling with folding? And perhaps I'll look at that comment and have a light bulb moment and tell you, hey, I can help you with that and put it in an upcoming video. So make sure that you let me know in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds and the two of us are at Clean My Space. If you like the Clean My Space channel and you wanna support the work that we're doing, the easiest way to do that is just to check out another video of ours right after this one. And here are a couple I think you might love. If you wanna learn about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.